Welcome everyone to the Phoenix Report. I'm Jack Connor. This is a this is going to be a very special episode of it. Um, I am here, and he's here with me in my kitchen, face to face. Uh, you know, I I would say the studio, but I don't really have a studio. It's just just me and the microphone. Um, we are here uh, as we record this. It is um, it is Tuesday, December fifteenth, two thousand fifteen. Uh, two days before the release of Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Um, I wanted to do this, you know, we're kind of messing with the format a little bit. Um, as we record this, um, you know, we have, obviously, it's two days before, two or three days before the movie comes out. We haven't seen it yet, you know, and by the time you hear this, it will it will be out. We will know what it's going to be. Um, and then, you know, of course, at the end, the end of this podcast, we're going to give our review with spoilers and, and all that. But uh, But for right now... The first part of this podcast is uh, is before we see it, before it's out, before anyone's seen it. Um, so, you know, this is going to be an interesting uh, interesting episode for sure. We're kind of playing around with the format, like I said. But uh, but here to join me for this special Star Wars The Force Awakens reaction podcast is my good friend Antonio Camunas. Hey guys, how are you? Yeah, very cool. Now, Ant- Antonio is a, uh, is a director... And, uh, you know, he, he's actually directed me in a couple short films that I've been in over at Full Sail University, Interviews at the Imperial, and Split Decision. He is a Full Sail grad, really awesome uh, up-and-coming filmmaker, and, uh, and also a musician as well. You're a drummer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we can't forget BB-8, right? Yes. <laughs> right, BB-8 has joined us. Um, there is actually a slight uh, audio, or, or I guess a video visual... You know, can, um, component to this. Are, are, are we on? Are we taking video right now? Or? Yeah, we're on. We're on film right now. I guess. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. So, so a couple things are clear about this podcast. A, I clearly have a face for an audio medium. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> no. But th- this this is great. This is sort of a different dimension to it. Uh, you know, of course, Antonio Beaner Beaner director. We have to get a little <laughs> bit of a film vibe. Yeah, we definitely migrated from the couch area. I was like, as soon as I got in here, I was like. Yeah, it uh, looks like we have better lighting uh, at the kitchen. So It does a little bit. For, for those of you seeing this, we're like kind of standing in my kitchen. It looks like we're about to film a cooking show or something <laughs> like that. Uh, that's not what we're going to do. We're here to talk Star Wars. We're here to talk all things Star Wars. Um, I mean, for, first thing that, that came to mind, um, do you remember how you felt when, um, you know, when they announced that this was going to happen back in 2012 when they announced that Disney had bought the rights you know, they had acquired Lucasfilm and that they were going to make not only episodes 7, 8, and 9, but a ton of other spinoff movies as well. What, what, what were your thoughts on that? I think I actually remember exactly where I was. Uh, I believe I was working at the time. I was back at the mall in Puerto Rico. And I think it was probably like on social media or Facebook or um twitter maybe maybe even the newspaper it was 2012 we were still getting like printed press i mean it wasn't it wasn't that long ago newspapers do still exist in 2015 but still you know they're less common now right anyways i remember like hearing about it and i remember probably being at work and there was a couple of star wars fans there there at work with me and you know my mind was just exploding with excitement this this was like Everything that we ever wanted is a direct sequel to Return of the Jedi. Like, we, we can't believe that this is finally happening. Obviously, there was this whole um, issue about Disney, you know, acquiring the rights. Okay, what's Disney going to do to it? You know, mm-hmm. what's the Disney component to it? Are they going to ruin it? We got all these, like, different memes about Princess Leia as a Disney princess. Are, are we going to have Mickey Mouse show up with a lightsaber or something? That you never know. I mean, he does have a Keyblade and, like, Kingdom Hearts and stuff, so you never know if he <laughs> might, you know, pop in a hidden Mickey in The Force Awakens. That'd be um, cool. But definitely, yeah, I was, I was interested about George Lucas, you know, giving away his baby, basically. Mm-hmm. But uh, everyone felt like this was the right choice. A, a company, like, a corporation like Disney definitely true to legacy uh i believe that that was a good move and i was just excited about any new films that were coming out and actually the force awakens believe believe it or not or episode seven yeah it was one of the motivations i had to basically leave puerto rico and continue my journey as a filmmaker my one my number one goal was to be on set on one of these new 
Star Wars films because we were getting new Star Wars after all these years. A dream come true for me was just being on the set of either Force Awakens, you know, Episode Eight, Nine, or Rogue One, or any whatever other, the spinoffs other, might be. Whatever. Which, <laughs> I mean, and that's part of the thing that Disney announced that they're basically not only going to make these, but they're going to be making Star Wars movies until the end of time. Basically, definitely with all these spinoffs and everything, which you know some of the hardcore fans might not like so much. They think, think, well, maybe maybe it might be too much of a good thing. But uh, you know, I think Lucas made the right move in terms of selling it to Disney because they're a company that knows how to you know market stuff. They know how to you know make merchandise, and and they they know how to take properties and spread it to the masses. And I mean, they, they've already. And Disney's already worked with Star Wars before. You you see Star Tours at Disney Hollywood Studios. That's yeah. been there for years. Yeah, they had they've had a relationship for uh, quite a while, I guess. It just makes sense. I mean, you see what they've done with Marvel in in, in recent years and all these other yeah. properties. And it's like they know what they're doing because you know, you know, hey, they don't just have little girls on lock anymore. It's you know now they have something for boys as well. Yeah. So it, now it, that it's you now very that smart. You mentioned, now that you mentioned Marvel, I wanted to add that. Um, I guess the only worries, I don't know if you were going to cover this later on, but one of the worries we could, I had, We could go into that. One of the worries I'd had now that you mentioned Marvel is like, obviously there was um, hype once you know, Marvel movies started to come to the theaters. You know, we got Iron Man mm-hmm. and we got Captain America and all these great films and Avengers came out and it was a big success. But right now, like Age of Ultron came out and I believe the hype just died out fairly quickly. And I don't believe... Like, the general audience is as interested in these uh, Marvel films as they were, you know, like, before the first Avengers. Like, it could it could be that people are, you know, they're just getting bored. It's it's like a cycle. People will eventually get bored of yeah, these comic I mean, book movies. I, I mean, it's one of those things where, of course, it's not going to be the same as it was with, you know, the first movie coming out. Because no one had ever seen anything like Avengers before. Yeah. Now it's there, and, and I, I don't think people are getting tired of it. I'm certainly not getting like, tired of it. I don't know if it's I less it. impressed or just, you know, if, if it's... Well, it's less of a it, surprise, It's I more think. of the same. Maybe it's the same, like, visual look. I've had some filmmaker friends saying that, you know, they just don't like Marvel movies because they basically all look the same. I don't have that same opinion all the time because I believe Guardians of the Galaxy was right. very different. In, well, plus there's a, there's a the question tone. of continuity there. Yeah. But um, but getting back to Star Wars, I mean, obviously you bring up being a filmmaker. Yeah. What is you know what does Star Wars mean to you? I mean, what was your history? Did you grow up being a, as a fan? Like, do you remember when you first saw it, or like what what about Star Wars as a fan as a filmmaker really appeals to you more than anything? I guess it's Star Wars is like like every everyone's been saying it's one of the main reasons why a lot of people got into filmmaking in the first place is the main reason why they wanted to tell stories and pick up a camera and start shooting stuff is it's just star wars is a very it's a very universal story and obviously george lucas had a lot of background with this and he crafted a very well told classic story that literally everyone can identify with you know kids adults older people you know, people of different cultures, and I was just one of one of those people. Like, sure. I got inspired. I remember, you know, grabbing these old VHS when I was a kid, and it's like, okay, Star Wars. I I've heard about this. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was five or six years old. I just grabbed these VHS, put them in the in the cassette player, hit play, and you know, my life changed forever. And even till this day, you know, I remember when the special editions came out. Everyone was excited about that. Yeah. I, I still have my Luke Skywalker lightsaber from the Return of the Jedi special edition back in like 1996, yeah. maybe. It was 97. Was, I remember that. 97. I remember going to see them in the theaters. And I mean, it, you know, I, I, I don't think I really got into it until I was around like 10 or 11. Uh, but I, I always kind of knew about it because my cousin Rick was into it. And I actually wanted to have him on the podcast tonight, but but he's been a little busy lately. But, um, but like, you know, you know, he kind of introduced me to it as a little kid and I was always curious about that. I'm like, wait a minute, they're humans, but, but where's earth? They're they're not on earth. Like I couldn't wrap my mind around it for a little bit. It's a galaxy far, far away, man. Like, but how is that a long time ago? It looks futuristic. (laughs) Like, you know, but it was when I looked at it more of like a fairy tale, then I started to get into it. This mythology. Yeah. 
and then of course the special editions and everything and uh so yeah i mean i've i've been hooked ever since it's no question it, it it's just it has all of the elements of great storytelling as mm-hmm. a strong character it's very much you know like a fairy tale in space but it has like those those core archetypes and just and there's a lot of complexity to it and um, I guess as a as a filmmaker to ask for the the last part of the question is even even J J Abrams like in recent press conferences he's always talking about how many things you know Star Wars A New Hope got right like I I can imagine it to be compared to maybe the Beatles. You know, right. the Beatles just came out and changed of, everything. You know, out of uh, Hamburg, Germany, and uh, like the the invasion, it, they just they were perfect. They were exactly what it was music right. needed at the right time. Yeah, it was the right place, the right time, and and no one had ever seen anything like it before. And it's the same thing with Star Wars. Like everything that they did at that moment, it was like winning the lottery. It's like all the elements were so like well placed and. Thanks to that, you know, we've gotten more of this uh, creative stuff going on all the time. Right. Now, it absolutely inter- you know, influenced generations. There's no question about that. I remember as a little kid first finding out about it and, you know, talking to my cousin Rick about it. It's like, oh, this is cool. But they were, it's like they all came out before I was born, though. Like, are they going to make any new ones? And he's like, no, they're not, they're not going to make sequels to it. <laughs> and uh, But, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we got the prequels and everything. I. I mean that, that that's very controversial. I'm a I'm a fan of the prequels. I love them. I don't care what anyone says. I was actually I, talking about that today at work. Right. Yeah. So I mean, some people love them, some people hate them, but they're there, and we got them, and they they did a lot of cool I mean, stuff. I, too. I remember when I saw the prequels in theaters, like I enjoyed them. I was very entertained. I I loved them when I went there. Obviously, that's when you look back, and even now with my filmmaking background. You can you can say yeah they they have some some issues like oh, yeah, with structure but, and performance but, but so does the original movies but though. still it's when, like, when you really look at people it don't, close enough people don't think about just the the theater experience you know you got all this great music and the sound effects and the visuals and it's new Star Wars it doesn't matter it's just Star Wars and it's new exactly. you've never seen it before exactly and everything else is no and, and you know what this movie has going for it is that it's we don't really know what to expect. At you know, with, with the with the prequels, we kind we kind of knew who the characters were going to be. We obviously knew how they ended up, mm-hmm. but this it's it's all new characters. It's an all new setting. It's after the fact, and it's I mean especially, I mean I, I I'm a little nervous in the sense where it's like I'm seeing these these characters. You're seeing Han Solo and and Leia and Luke Skywalker, you know, in their 60s and 70s now. Which which is it, it's in, in one hand it's kind of cool to see those characters kind of grow up and kind of kind of see them at a different stage in their lives, but it's like you gotta wonder it's like uh, you know I, I I mean I have a bad feeling and, and we I, I don't mean to jump the gun on productions in here I, I got a bad feeling that one of those characters you know might die in the, in this movie or might or might not have such a good future like I remember some of the rumors were that like Luke. It, that like after the events of Return of the Jedi, Luke went away and he's been in hiding for like thirty years. And I'm like, man, that's yeah, that's no way for Luke to go out. I I wanted him to have a happy ending, but I mean, but again, it's too early to tell what it's going to be. Um, I mean, I, I guess going back to my original question, if I could answer that for a little bit about what I thought when I heard the announcement was that like, you know, that this is cool. I mean, because honestly, I was satisfied with the six movies that came out before. I was like, all right, you know what? I mean, if this is all we see in the in the movies, and that's it, it's it was a great story, one through six. So it's like to me, everything else is a bonus. So I'm not worried about if it's going to be good or not. I know that I'm going to like it. What I am worried about is the the legions of fans out there, the fanboys, who are going to scrutinize it no matter what because they've built it up so high in their heads that it can never meet that expectation that they want. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what happened with the prequels, was that people had this idea of what it was going to be, and they hated it. Meanwhile, the younger generation who, who you know came up, like my younger cousins and that sort of thing, like they love it because they grew up with that. And I, and I think like some of the older fans don't look at it from, from that perspective. So Yeah, even like uh, talking about that, yeah. you know, Lucas was just, there was a, like an interview recently with George Lucas, and he was just saying like, it was just kind of the fans that bullied bullied him away from the saga it it is and that and And that 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 makes me sad and 
uh, as one filmmaker yeah. to another filmmaker, it's and I know how hard that can feel because yeah. imagine a whole like series that you've created and you just get constantly like beat up and beat up and beat yeah. up. Yeah, I and mean it's it's hard, and I totally respect his decision, and it's just some you know it's hard to say oh it's just people you know they're just being mean they they don't have a life or anything like that but yeah i, I guess people uh need to just yeah, be a little just bit relax a little bit and man. just chill you know, <laughs> I, I mean not for nothing it's it's his story and it's and it was his creation so it's like you know wh- whether you like all the movies or don't it's like you got to respect that and i think and what i was worried about was that jj was gonna pull a thing where it's like he tried to come out Whereas, like, he would try to come out and say, oh, the prequels never happened, or try not to acknowledge them. Like, I, yeah, like, I, I think, wipe everything away. I, I, I don't think he's going to do that. No. I, I, you know, I've, I've read too many interviews. I think he's too respectful of George. And, like, I even saw pictures just from the other night, like, um, the preview. Like, George was there. Hayden Christensen was there. Yeah, exactly. Which was cool, which he should be. I mean, like, look. Yeah, they're all know, part of the he's, story. He's earned it, you know? I mean, look, no matter what you think about him as an actor or what the old movies, I mean, he's part of the history. So yeah. it's he should be acknowledged, you know, while moving forward. Um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to say. But, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, it's just everything else is a bonus, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not going to complain about new movies that are coming out. I think this is going to be good. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like I, I'm I'm tired of having to defend why I like something. That's I don't true. think I, I hope that I won't have to do that with with this movie that's coming out. But I mean, even if no one else likes it, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna like it because I mean it's Star Wars. Yeah, I'm. I guess I'm I'm really excited not only because it's just new Star Wars, it's also because of all the collaboration that's going on between you know Disney and the director. And all the people involved, like all the production designers and the special effects people, and everyone's been saying that JJ has been very collaborative, even with the actors. Like listening to a couple of actors say, "Hey, why don't we try this and that?" Mm-hmm. And he's actually take taken into consideration and added it into the storyline. And not only like the films, it seems like some of the actors' comments ended up in a couple of comic books. Yeah. So this is really cool. Where there's like so much collaboration going on and that's what made the original trilogy so good it was just the collaboration between such great artists Mm -hmm. and i guess that's one of the things that kind of faltered a little bit maybe in the prequels was just that everyone would say yes 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 to to, to to lucas because i i guess it was him you know he was he was basically going ahead with this mission is which, and, I mean, you know, not for nothing, it is his thing, so he, he kind of earned that right, but at the same time, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but there's still collaboration, but still maybe people were just afraid to say, you know, this sucks. Right, you know? or, or maybe we should try it a different way, or, or whatever it, it Yeah, but it's be, all, but... like, filmmaking is really all about, you know, all the great artists coming together and making yeah. this, like, a, something unique. And not even that, like, today i i haven't you know i haven't wanted to read anything about the premiere yesterday mm-hmm. but they're already talking about you know like awards and oscars and stuff like that so can star wars come back to the to the level of actually winning like some awards in the cinema community that would be amazing i i don't even know if they've ever done that besides like effects awards it doesn't it doesn't surprise up. me cuz something like for example like mad max Mm-hmm. Like I, I saw Mad Max with you, like yeah, for the yeah. second viewing, and Mad Max is being held as one of the best movies of the year. Right, and a lot of people weren't expecting that, and it's Mad Max. Right, you know, right. it's like the Road Warrior. <laughs> right, it was and, insane, and it's but you know they're just acknowledging like what great film is like in the times that we have right now, and yeah. if JJ and his team made something amazing, I think it uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great to be acknowledged by every other filmmaker in the community. Exactly. And let's not forget, I mean, what he did with Star Trek, I mean, was amazing. Reboot. I, I, I mean, I loved what he did with Trek. And, and uh, yeah, he, he made Star Trek cool. Yeah. And not that it not that it wasn't before, but it's like, they, you know, he really did a great job with that, I yeah. think. Something I wanted to mention also that, um, I guess, like the whole um, style thing mm-hmm. with J.J. versus, like, Lucas... Um, some fans, obviously, they're trying to conserve that Star Wars look. But I, one of the worries I had going in was that um, even if they're trying to make everything 
seem like the the last films. Yeah, practical effects. Practical effects and all that. But, you know, Lucas had a very particular style, you know. Just take this is the first time that it's like actually in another director's brain where he didn't right. have anything to do with it like right. could it be kind of jarring to right. go into the theater now keep and it, just it, get it, these it, yeah it's like you said because i mean you know we do know that empire and jedi were directed by Irving Kirshner, Kirshner and richard marquand yeah. but lucas was, was still there obviously yeah, he was he was all, like on set almost you know all the time it was just right. like oh, okay this is he would like approve things this is cool this is not but now just in the visual style for me as a filmmaker mm-hmm. is like is it going to be jarring to see a movie with like a lot different camera angles or just a different type of maybe like camera movements that we've never seen before? It's probably going to be insanely cool, mm-hmm. but is it going to be jarring to the audience? Like, whoa, this is not the Star Wars I remember. Like all these classic like wipes and transitions. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. Um, but what I've seen for the trailers, I've seen like they attach a GoPro to an X-wing, and I'm so. Right. Yeah. This is this is gonna look really cool, but I don't know if it's gonna be like shocking, like whoa, this is a very interesting uh, um, take on the on the gotcha. series. Um, let, let's talk about what the story is gonna be. Like, I haven't read any of the the, the comics that that have come out. Like, there have been some like some like sort of prequel comics as far as like telling the story. I've tried to stay away from that, even though eventually I want to go back and check them out. Mm-hmm. But um, but the, the premise, and I'm pulling up the Wikipedia page right now. Uh, apparently, The Force Awakens is set approximately 30 years at the, after the events of Return of the Jedi, where the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire have become the Resistance and the First Order. So, um, so I mean, obviously, we're catching up with, uh, with Han and Leia. You know, I, I don't really know if they're married by this time, or, I mean, I'm assuming they're still together. Yeah, that's, um, like, that's another thing. Like, what the relationships that these characters have, like, we've heard so many different things over the years. And these, you know, um, extended universe, yeah, or right. what it's what what is now called the Legends, Star Wars Legends. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I read some of those books, and, and but I mean, they're not doing a, they're not, you know, following those books, which I understand. You know, I mean, I understand why that would have been too much to adapt. It's yeah, but just... it, and in, in the press conference with uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Kasdan and J.J. Abrams, they were talking about the like the writing process, and it's totally true. You can't make something great if you have so many limitations. Like you have to, like work between you know these uh, these restrictions that are already placed, like the characters and their children and the villains and the worlds. I guess it was much better to just start from scratch. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't know how they could have done that and been true to it. And hopefully they'll pull a few ideas. We would have had it. movies until you know. Can you guys just excuse excuse me one second? I just gotta make sure my door's unlocked. <laughs> BB8. We'll <laughs> Good thing we're not streaming this live. BB, BB-8 intermission. Uh, BB, thanks, thanks for adding that. Uh, uh, so yeah. Oh, so yeah. But the, what would be interesting would be if, and what what I am imagining for for this the take JJ's take on the film mm-hmm. is just we have all these like opinions and. Like stories we've heard about what ha- what's supposed to happen with mm-hmm. these characters. Han and Leia have to get married. They have to get chil- uh, They have to have children. Luke, you know, meets Mara Jade and has children too. But what what if JJ goes like, you know what? What if what if Han Solo and Leia didn't have kids? What that, if Luke uh, never that, had kids? That might be. We we don't know what it's gonna be. That would be a very I guess shocking twist with everyone that I mean, has I, been. Because it's like, you know, they have, like, pockets of the Empire still there. It's like, it's one of those things, I hope that everything that happened in the original trilogy wasn't for nothing. (laughs) Because they did overthrow Palpatine and destroy Vader and all that, but it's like, obviously it didn't take 100%. They're still strong. There's still something there. Which, I guess it would be chaos after, you know, overthrowing an Empire like that. And you'd still have, you know, you'd still have people with those ideas and... Oh, and kind of like neo-Nazism or something like yeah. that. It's like ideas don't really die, so maybe that's part of it. Um, yeah, let, let's let's talk about some of the new characters here. We have Kylo Ren is going to be the villain. Um, he's going to be the commander of the First Order and a member of the Knights of Ren, which yes. seems to be like a new take on the Sith. Yeah, like they're they're not necessarily Sith, but they're definitely a new group of Dark Jedi. Where I don't think they're following the Rule of Two. It looks like there are going to be several of them. 
Yeah, like force sensitive. Yeah, or dark Jedi for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, I guess like Ren is sort of like a it's sort of like Darth, where it's a title. It's not like his given name. Or um, maybe it's just an excuse to hide their last name. Right, Spoilers. right, right. And <laughs> now we have Daisy Ridley as Rey. She's the she's the female lead. She's a scavenger on the planet Jakku, which looks a lot like Tatooine. Um, and then we have John Boyega as Finn, who was a stormtrooper, um, then turns good. And I'm guessing this guy is force sensitive because we've seen him with a lightsaber. Yeah, he's hol- he's actually holding Anakin's lightsaber. That's the, uh, which we have to talk about at. Some yeah, point. Uh, that was Anakin's. That was Luke's, but. You know, he got his hand cut off, this so is, maybe that's this is the, that's, this is that's the same. Be wild. This is gonna be the same lightsaber from the Battle of Bespin with Darth Vader and yeah, Luke Skywalker. It's gonna be crazy. If you if you visit at Launch Bay over Hollywood Studios, the the tag on the hero lightsaber says it was recovered from the uh, from the remain from the wait. It was recovered from the industrial deaths of Cloud City Man. by someone. Mm. <laughs> which, which, by the way, um, I don't think Lando is coming back for this one. I wonder why. Like, really, they couldn't get Billy D for this one. Like, you know, re- I mean, he's still alive and well. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know if he. Maybe I mean, I'm hoping Lando shows up. He was an underrated character, by the way. Yeah. Homeboy blew up the second Death Star. Yeah. Come kind on, of like an important character right there. We right? need more love for Lando, people. Yeah, Lando's pretty cool. And um, yeah, then we have Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron. He's a X-wing fighter pilot. Um, Lupita Nyong'o as uh, Maz Kanata. Uh, she's a pirate. Space pirate. She's, yeah. She's a thousand years old, it seems. Huh, interesting. Uh, Andy Serkis um, as Supreme Leader Snoke, which I'm guessing he's going to be sort of the Palpatine to Kylo Ren's uh, uh, CGI Vader. CGI character, yeah. yeah. Um, then there's General Hux. I guess he's a, he's a military guy. I guess sort of... He's going to be sort of like the Tarkin to, uh, you know... General Hux, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, he's going to be sort of the uh, the Tarkin to uh, to Kylo Ren's Vader a little bit, and um, then we have uh, obviously we have you know Chewie coming back, C three PO, R two. Yeah, it was just cr- and creeping then, on, on then your Ma- Wikipedia. Yeah, printout. Then, then Max von Sydow as Lor Santeca. Yeah, where, that was that, that, that was that what I was wondering about because we've seen uh, most of all these characters, but we've been missing like. Uh, uh, a clip of uh, Andy Zirkus, like a reveal of Andy Zirkus and Max von Sydow's character, and also Lupita Nyong'o. Although it, it has been more talked about mm-hmm. about what her character is, but I'm very curious about this Max von Sydow character because yeah. you know he's a classic, you know, black and white actor, right. um, just like almost like uh, Christopher Lee was a Count Dooku. So yeah, or Peter he, Cushing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, is he is or he going to reprise? Yeah some sort of like uh sith lord uh maybe role maybe we don't or, we don't know there's absolutely we have no clue they haven't like we've seen so many clips and trailers but at the same time we have we have no idea i'm curious what they're going to do with luke i mean obviously he plays a big role in it but he hasn't really been in the trailers so i you know there's obviously been rumors that either luke turned to the dark side or that he's gone away or i i, I don't know i mean it's going to be interesting to see what happens to him but i'm obviously he's going to play a big part but they've been keeping a lid on it yeah but i mean you have to think about like if you really sit down and think about luke skywalker and this is one of the reasons that jj abrams decided to make the movie in the first place like he said yes because the producer kathleen kennedy asked him don't you want to be the person that tells the world and tells the story of who luke skywalker is mm-hmm. like because we've seen luke skywalker in the in the old trilogy but who did he become right like, like what happens now and you have to think about it like i was i've literally been thinking like for the past two weeks and the hype has been growing like what happens what happens after the the, the destruction of the first death star are we losing video okay that's fine it's it, we can just keep talking for the podcast yeah. but uh, who is Luke Skywalker after the destruction of the first Death Star? He's basically on the Empire's most wanted list. You know, mm-hmm. he ha- he has to be in hiding all the time. Everyone wants to kill this guy. You right. know, Vader wants to turn him to the dark side or or destroy him. And then uh, after Return of the Jedi, you know, he kills Vader. Well, he doesn't kill Vader, but you know, uh, he's part of um, 
the destruction of the emperor and mm -hmm. the empire and i guess whatever re remains of the empire that becomes the first order they know that this guy is still out there that's you know? a good point this is and not only that he's on the most wanted list mm -hmm. in the galaxy as far as the new empire is concerned but he's also technically the last jedi yeah that we know about like mm -hmm. what's the pressure that luke has to be feeling as right. the last remaining jedi ever yeah and this could be something that also you know a plot point for kylo ren who mm -hmm. seems to be obsessed with vader stuff and anakin's lightsaber right right now now there's all sort of sorts of rumors out there about how some of the characters like um people think that ray might either be luke's daughter or han and leia's daughter or nobody's daughter people yeah they, <laughs> they might be completely unrelated people have speculated well is kylo ren maybe he's han and leia's kid or, or Luke's son, or something like that. We don't really know yet. What about, uh, like, maybe being, like, a, I'm resu it, a I'm resurrection of someone? Like, right. Because the Force awakens, you know? I'm guessing Finn is not one of their kids. I'm just... <laughs> hey, what about Lando? Right. Lando's hey, legacy Leia. continues. <laughs> How would you like some Colt 45? <laughs> there we go. You never know. Uh, yeah, no, he looks a little dark to be, uh, to be Lando's kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lando is like, kind of milk chocolate. A little, little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, but, um, no, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's like, and it's, that's kind of the beauty of this, going in it and not knowing, and not knowing what it's gonna be or how it's gonna end up, and, you know, we still have episodes eight and nine after that, so. I still be, I still feel kind of bummed out that I've seen as much as I've seen with all these clips and trailers, but it seems like even though they've marketed the movie a lot, like very well, it's all over the place, it seems that this is just maybe five or ten percent of the actual film. Like, we haven't seen oh, yeah. anything yet. Cause oh, yeah. We've no. seen the same clips over and over again, like Jakku and maybe that forest planet and you know a little a couple of clips from Millennium Falcon but you know there's still a lot to be seen that we we don't know about so right. at the same time i wish i hadn't seen anything but i really hope that there's you know another 95% that's going to surprise the hell out of me so we'll see man we're we're into uncharted territory right now with uh, this new this new star wars and seeing what's you know what happened 30 years after it's it's going to be crazy um I, I think it's going to be good. I've, I've got a good vibe about it. and um, I mean, it's, it's hard for it not to be bad because, like we were t talking about, like all the people that collaborated with this, and not only that, it's like Lawrence Kazan wrote The Empire Strikes yeah, Back. Yeah. Like, he already has a legacy of writing damn good films. Yeah, there's a pedigree and there. And J.J., you know, J.J.'s J.J. You know, he's been hailed as the like the new Steven Spielberg and a combo of Lawrence Kazan and JJ writing this new, you know, and they're really they're really writers at heart. Yeah. And if it, if there's anything I've learned from my studies is that if it's amazing on paper, and then it's translated very well into the visual aspect, we're gonna have a a very breathtaking new chapter to Star Wars, mm -hmm. and I I I have faith that this is going to be. You know, a 99.9 .9 on the Rotten Tomatoes scale, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, however it turns out, I mean, I'm sold on it. I know you are. And, um, yeah, I think we're going to pick up uh, on the second part of this uh, in about, you know, I guess w whenever we both see it. <laughs> so um, so stay tuned. If you haven't seen it yet, by the time you listen to this, um, the next part is going to be full of spoilers. So stop listening right now. Uh, and we will be back with part two. Thanks. UV8 signing out. All right. All right, and we're back for part two. I'm here with Antonio. Hey, guys. It is, uh, it is Monday, uh, December 21st, 2015, and we have seen Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, I've only seen it once. Uh, you, you've only seen it once, too, right, Ant? I've wanted to see it again, but, you know, like, my family's here, and we've I don't know, just right. Christmas time. It's been kind of crazy. But definitely this week, I'm going again at least two or three times by the end of the year. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I haven't made too many plans on when my second viewing is going to be, but I uh, figured this would be a good time to come back in since you know it's still relatively fresh in our minds. Yeah. Our first viewing. I'm sure on, on subsequent viewings, we're going to see all kinds of stuff that we didn't see the first time. 
Um, but uh, but yeah. Now why why don't um, no? Wh- did you go see it here in uh here in Orlando here in downtown Disney or? I actually I I had been preparing, uh, for an IMAX 3D experience for a long time. So I actually waited, um, on Friday. I waited about three or four hours outside of the Regal Point, which is kind of the biggest IMAX in all of Orlando. At yeah, least. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty huge. And I know where that is, right yeah. off of I Drive. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, and there was a lot of people there. I guess a lot of people know that it's uh, like kind of the best experience you can get in that sense. And, uh, I mean, the sound was amazing. The picture was decent. There was, like, a, a problem with the 3D, but, you know, it didn't t- really take away that much from the experience. But, right. yeah, just really good. We we did a 3D thing here. Uh, you know, my wife bought um, – she bought tickets to like the the Thursday night showing, was which it, is like the advanced thing. Was it the ETX? Um, it, it was the it was the dine and uh, you know the dine in. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. The, yeah, you got numbered. Yeah, the fork the fork and screen thing at uh, the AMC uh, in Disney Springs. Yeah, downtown it's more, Disney. that's more relaxed, more chill. It was cool. I mean, the o- the only problem was like the only seats that we were able to get were like the ones like front row center. So we were like right up, like kind of cr- cricking our necks up and. Um, uh, and it was 3D, so it, so it was it was a lot to take in, yeah. but uh, but I mean it it was cool. Um, I gotta admit though, a couple things kind of spoiled my particular view uh, movie going experience. Yeah, I think you told me about this. Yeah, yeah, I, I mentioned this to you. But, but number one, <clears throat> the day before, I was on YouTube, which I guess you know. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, you should have stayed <laughs> off the internet and everything. I'm like, no, I shouldn't have stayed off the internet. Because I, you know, I can still live my life. I don't need to hide in a hole, or at least I shouldn't have to. But, um, but yeah, I was on um, a YouTube video. It was like an interview that Oscar Isaac was doing, and some dude posted a uh, a big spoiler right in the comments. There, no warning. I guess maybe because I guess on Wednesday night uh, they had probably shown some critic screenings. There, it was probably out internationally yeah. by that point. So someone must have seen it. Um, but it's just like a random like comment, just yeah. like just, just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Just some you dude looked, and there it was no. But I mean, this guy knew what he was doing. He's like, hey, I'm gonna spoil it for you guys. <laughs> like he pretty much said that. So yeah, it's those people. Um, oh, I mean, I wanted to to message this guy and give him death threats, <laughs> you know, and hope that he dies of cancer. You just give which him I pleasure. Do. That's uh, but I I did actually report his comment, so his comment isn't up there anymore so at least i feel i feel good about that that no one else has to see that or exactly. that hadn't seen it before so um yeah so we're in part two it's monday so if you're still listening we're gonna spoil this movie you know right now so this is your as we mentioned before in part one this is spoiler alert you've been warned if you haven't seen the movie yet please stop right now because we're gonna spoil it. Please now. stop. You and ready? Go watch it right now. Okay. Yeah. Ser- seriously, what are you waiting for? It's been a few days. It's Monday. If you care that much about it, spoilers, y- you need to see it by now. All right. So, anyways, spoiler alert. The guy posted that not only was Kylo Ren Han Solo's son, but that Kylo Ren kills Han Solo in there. So I my reaction to seeing that was like I mean I wasn't overly shocked because I had a feeling that they'd do something like that. Yeah, they've the thing is that they've been mentioning this for you know about a year. You but know? you know it, again that just it, it ruined my movie going experience because I was kind of anticipating it to happen. Like, oh, I was it was official, I was ho- official. I was hoping it wouldn't happen, and when it did, I got so mad. Uh, you know, I was just furious. And, and what did? But did, what did you feel? Like you, you, you saw the comment, but then you saw it happen, and you were like, "Yeah, okay, so this is happening." But did you feel the emotion of what was going on in the scene, or were were just just furious that you had? You um, know, been I, I mean, spoiled by this. I mean, everything. I I kind of saw it coming, but I I was still very much in the moment. And, and by the way, this doesn't take away from my opinion on the film itself. I thought it was great. But um, this was going on. Also, <laughs> I took my wife there, and full disclosure, my wife Christina, she's not like she's not really a Star Wars fan. Like she didn't really grow up with it. She hadn't seen the movies before we started dating. So like, I mean, she had seen one through six with me, and she liked them, but it wasn't like really her thing. So like, she didn't re- really remember a ton going in. So, <laughs> and of course, my wife 
who loves to loves to bust my chops at every turn because uh, she's she's a jokester. She was making a few jokes during it, and I was getting legitimately mad. I was like, "Babe, be quiet." I'm trying to enjoy this thing. This is important. And, and she right would make now. predictions, and then when they would come true, she would be like, "I knew it! I knew it!" <laughs> and I mean, and, and I feel I feel bad about this because I got legitimately mad at her. We had like, we seriously had 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 some fights for the next couple of days, honey. If you're listening to this, I am so sorry. I love you. Uh, <laughs> I, I love you so much, and I'm sorry for being a jerk. But again, again, so I had those two things kind of going against me. Uh, cause like I was trying to focus in on the movie and I had a few distractions going in. Dude, not, not only that, I think I had the same experience cause my, my girlfriend, uh, was kind of sick at the time. I'm sick now. Um, right. but she was sick at the time and she was like blowing her nose all the time. And I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty like OCD about that. I was like, please don't blow your nose th- like throughout the entire film. Like every five seconds, please just don't do it. Just, and, and, just, and just normally, stick some, like, I don't know, some pieces of paper on there, like leave it till the end. And normally <laughs> if it were any other movie, yeah. for any other movie, we would, I, mean, I wouldn't, care. I don't know about you, but I would have been cool with but it. But I would know, be it's... like, seriously, like blowing your nose every three minutes. Come on, just, so just like, don't do I it. Got, I'll er- be distracted. I got irrationally angry at my wife and honey if you're listening again i am sorry a thousand times i'm sorry i, I, love, you. Been I love you so much i'm very ocd about that just... but so so that that was the deal but that being said that being said uh, again i cannot take any anything away from this film it was awesome i mean pure and simple it was pretty much everything you wanted it to be um you know a, a, again as far as what a, going back to what was i what i was feeling i guess we'll, we'll just jump right to that that was the big you know, I guess that was like the probably the biggest moment of the film. Mm-hmm. The revelation that Kylo Ren is the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia, born Ben Solo, which I thought was a really cool nod, named him after yeah. Obi Wan. Because uh, I remember in the books, in the original like expanded universe, Luke's son was named Ben. Yeah, it's like a like a twist. Yeah. But it, yeah, there were elements of that, and then in the books, Han and Leia had three kids. They had the the two twins, Jason and Jaina. Jason became Darth Cadus. Yeah. And Jaina ended up having to kill her brother. Yeah. I guess um, this is just one of those, uh, maybe just one of those things that it's just natural that it, it's in the books and it's also in the yeah, like, original so, script. So it's something that just had to happen. You know, that tribute to Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Um, but, it, you know, again, I, I, I understand why they did what they did. I understand why... Han Solo was killed. I'm sure that was a condition of Harrison Ford coming back because he had wanted he had wanted Han Solo to die since like Return of the Jedi. Uh, he was. It seems like he was supposed to like I, like been, after Empire. Like that was it. No, it seems like even uh, Gary Kurtz, the producer of uh, A New Hope and Empire, he basically left for Return of the Jedi because of how they basically changed the entire storyline to sell more toys, and mm-hmm. he was very angry at George Lucas for that, but. Han Solo was supposed to indeed die, and Luke Skywalker was supposed to just, you know, go into space and disappear. And that wasn't the ending that we had. It, it seems like JJ is just, you know, uh, focusing back to the, you know, Star Wars destiny, like right. what should have happened. He's just resetting history right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess to an extent, I'm sure that was. Well, I'm sure Harrison Ford also took the role because I'm sure he's just over it at this point. Where it's just like it's like okay, I got to do this. If they kill the character, then they're, they're not gonna, people aren't going to keep asking me to come back. So let's just do I it, wonder, get it out of the I way. I wonder if like some fans are actually like discussing whether he's like alive or dead or something like that. You know, pe- I haven't been discussing it because people have sure. suggested that to me, and I'm like, you know what? Not for nothing. He took a lightsaber to the chest. He, that's pretty dead to me. And fell down like a tunnel, like a reactor. Yeah. Yeah, and which. You know, a few minutes after that, the planet blew up. So it's it, it's <laughs> that's, I, like I, honestly, tri- that's like triple dead. Yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty. I mean, Han's Han is a crafty smuggler. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he he's pretty awesome, but it's it's kind of tough for Han, for Han to walk away from that one. Yeah. So as much as I would love him to still be alive, as heartbroken and angry as I was to see this iconic character die, I mean, that's like seeing like. It's like seeing Superman or Batman die on screen or something He's, like that. Like, it's just it, it's it's something th- this character is so iconic. You know, it's like James Bond. Like yeah, you don't he, think something's gonna happen. It is kind of crazy. It's like how how do you do that as like as a filmmaker? Like know that you are about to 
kill off one of the most iconic characters in film history. It's and yeah. I all, I guess all I can say is that um, even after hearing about it, and when I saw like the setting, I I was like, okay, there's basically a fifty percent chance that he's gonna die or he's gonna live, and it, it he was gone. You know, he's dead. And for me, it was a beautiful scene. It was very poetic. They did this thing where like Star Killer Base finishes mm-hmm. like drawing energy from the sun and basically shuts down and it's very like the setting the, it goes to the dark right after like kylo ren makes his decision to go full evil and yeah just blast him in the chest with the you know tri lightsaber right and and you know that that's one of those things where it's like you know yeah you know vader did some pretty reprehensible stuff when uh you know when, when he was a sith but i mean obviously he did make that uh make that you know baby face turn at the end as they say in the world of pro wrestling he uh, he redeemed himself and kind of came back yeah and... he was a softy right but this guy kylo ren he's uh i, he's I mean evil. that'd be tough to come back from that i mean he's I, gone. I i think he's all in he's like, all he's all in this like, was a test and he he passed it like dark side all the way yeah no he's he's all in there's he's going down there's no coming That's, back from that and that actually scares how about me. oh my god the, the heart-wrenching reaction from chewy no, it's just the whole scene, you know. I I couldn't breathe for a second, you know. I was And like, I love how Chewie got angry, shot him in the chest. He's like, "You little punk." He, yeah, he got a shot down. in at least. It was that like, was, "Yeah, Chewie." That was rad. I was like, "Yes." I'm like, "Shoot him, Chewie." No, man. It was um, a very harsh scene. Let, 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 let's let's go back to the beginning though. Um um the new characters. I really like the new characters, man. Yeah, that's like uh, amazing character development. Like they, they really were... took their time with like introducing all these guys. They just want to make sure that you know they get them right. And for the next two films, we already know who these these guys are. This yeah, is, this is a very very good introduction. I to really this new thought world. what they did with with Finn, with John Boyega's character Finn. I thought that was pretty sharp. Like how they explained how, like you know, the, this the First Order, it's the new iteration of the Empire. Um, they like took kids from their families when they're born and they train them pretty much since birth, like condition them, brainwash them in order to be stormtroopers. I thought like, I was like, man, that's, that's pretty sharp. That's like a new take on uh, like explanation of stormtroopers. It makes, makes me wonder. It's like, is that I, I'm like, I wonder if that's what they did in the empire, like post clone wars. Once yeah, the, the clones all died. I had this feeling that a new hope they just like posted on Craigslist, like, Oh, stormtrooper wanted. Right. He's like, okay, I guess I need this job. <laughs> Be like, uh, it's like, come join the empire. We have brownies. <laughs> yeah, here is a, a little bit more dark. You know, it's just a snatching little children, training them, and brainwashing. Them. Which it's makes me think, like, maybe, crazy. maybe they, maybe they might have done that during the empire, but I don't know. I mean, because it was the government, and um, these guys couldn't shoot. Right. <laughs> these, these these first order troopers, they they can shoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're dangerous. They can, like, like fence off lightsabers now. Right, right. They've done a little more training since then. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that was interesting, just even kind of establishing what the First Order and the Resistance was. Um, like, the, the, um, like, the Empire did fall in Return of the Jedi. It wasn't like this, it wasn't like this was a continuation of the Empire. The, the First Order is like a splinter group, like, yeah. almost like... If I can think of a real world example, almost like a neo Nazi movement. Yeah. How it's like, you know, obviously that regime fell, but, you know, unfortunately there are still like people with those ideas out there. And it's like, what if they got together and posed like a legitimate threat? Mm-hmm. And the resistance, which sounds like a re- rebel group, is actually like sanctioned by the New Republic. And, you know, Leia is a general now. And so, I mean, yeah, so that, that's, that's a whole thing right there. Um, just the thing about this movie that I found most striking was that, you know, you have a 30-year 30, 30 gap between um, 6 and 7. So I, it's just so much stuff has happened that, I mean, th- this movie is great, but it, it, I felt like it left so, so much more questions than it did answers. And maybe that's the point. Obviously, they're setting up for... You know, for eight and nine when they come out and what's happening there, and it's just, I mean, but I mean, it did that in a very satisfying way where where it, I wasn't angry about it. It was one of those things where it's like, okay, there are a lot of different things in play, like how that 
how things got to be where they are that this movie didn't necessarily answer, but it left us wanting a lot more. Is this uh, stuff that's like coming out in like the new books that are like coming out? Slowly? Well, I, I mean, I don't, are I don't know. Bridging I, the gap between. Well, I, I know that I know that there is a comic series out right now. I don't know if Dark Horse is publishing it or if it's Marvel or. I think Dark Horse has nothing to do with this anymore. No, I, I mean they're, they're out of the picture. Or IDW, I think, is the publisher of the comics. Okay. Well, anyways. They have, there's a Star Wars comic book series out called Shattered Empire, which I think deals with like the fallout of Return of the Jedi, and I think it because I, I checked it out on Wikipedia. I think it deals with like Poe Dameron's parents and how they know Luke and all these other things. And um, yeah, I mean, so I was just I imagine there's so much that happened in between um, in between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens that you know hopefully I mean now that there are going to be all these anthology films out there. I mean, people are going. Disney's going to be making Star Wars movies until the end of time. So, like, you have a lot of room for these stories to be told, and that's exciting. Yeah, but that, that's the other thing. Like, it's cool that they don't really give you all the answers and they don't explain everything fully. Because I think that's what you know, just sci-fi and you know, mystery is all about. You just, you just leave a lot of. Uh, open possibilities for the fans to just you know keep the discussions going online and everything i I, I mean it's almost written like a tv show where it's like they keep you guessing like keep coming back which i guess that was sort of the original intent of star wars anyway because it was a throwback to all the old serial movies Uh from the like the 30s and 40s like flash gordon and stuff like that so um yeah i i thought uh i thought carrie fisher looked uh, you know, she got into great shape as uh, as General Leia Organa, no longer, well, I guess still a princess to Max von Sydow's character. I wasn't really sure who he was supposed to be, but yeah, he, he was... got killed right at the right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting like a like old you know Sith Lord. It's like, oh, okay, this is exactly the opposite. <laughs> or, or, or yeah, yeah, or maybe it was like there were some people were thinking like, man, do you think he was Wedge Antilles? But no, that's, <laughs> that that would be a deep cut. But yeah. um. But yeah, I mean, I, I just thought it was really interesting, everything they did with Finn. I thought uh, his character was very interesting. I'd love to know more about what led to his decision to defect from the First Order. Yeah. You know, because obviously that reconditioning didn't totally take with him, and he kind of flipped the script and, and became a good guy. Is it is it maybe like this, uh, like maybe he's Force-sensitive, or he's just, like, in maybe just good runs in his family, you know? He just can't can't deal with this. He... He, these characters are very, very human, and they, yeah. they have a lot of flaws. Or, I mean, because, like, something happened where it's, like, another Stormtrooper buddy of his died on, on Jakku, and, and he was trying to think, like, okay, what? Are, wait a minute, what are we doing here? Like, we're, So, I guess he had some conscience, and uh, unlike some of the other ones. Yeah, but, but I guess in just, like, a couple, like, maybe less than five minutes, and we kind of, like, already got, you know, some real motivation for this character and i would you know we were sold for the entire film this is this is who finn is yeah so i mean the 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 premise over um the premise is that luke has disappeared um you know obviously the 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 first order is trying to find is trying to hunt down luke and the resistance is trying to find him nobody knows where he is which I'm hoping they explain a little bit more in the coming movies because it's like, I, 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 and and they kind of explain it in this in this movie that after Ben Solo, you know, fell to the dark side and became Kylo Ren and wanted to be wanted to be like Gramps, yeah. you know, his idolized you know Vader, old Vader, yeah. So I mean, obviously something happened that was so devastating that Luke uh, needed to take off. You know, I I'm hoping we get a good explanation for that because that's like one of those things where it's like, it's like, dude, like Luke, we need you the most right now. You need to stick around. You know, why would why would you take off and and be like, oh, I'm I'm not involved. It's like that's when the resistance needs you the most. So I'm hoping that there's some sort of explanation for that. Yeah, um, just imagine. Just imagine. It seems like he was he was training like the new the new. Um, order of like jedis yeah like yoda said the, pass on what you have learned yeah you he know? had all these padawans going on and just ben solo was one of them and it seems that he was tempted by the dark side because his you know just his parents weren't there i guess that's one of the things in the film where 
Leia and Han just weren't there. Or they, they, they kind of him. shipped him off to, to Uncle Luke and yeah. be like, hey, here you go. I guess that was kind of like a gap, a gap between maybe it's just the, you know, family, like that family need of family that just tempted him to the dark side and he was seduced so much easily. It seemed like he killed all the Padawans and and left Luke just there like, what have I done? I, I guess, yeah, and and obviously that had an effect on Han and Leia because they were they were they trusted they had, him, they trusted Luke, or I mean, well, I mean Han and Leia with each other. I mean, they they it, it seemed like they had separated. They had been separated for a little bit. Yeah, but it seems that they were separated be- because of like the, you know, just like when there's when there's like a a married couple and they're mm-hmm. like if they have a small child and they the child like is in an accident or dies. Know how harsh it could be for them to actually stick together. They just yeah, you know, or, or split up because they can't deal with right. Because they keep he, blaming each other like it for, was your it's like, fault. Where do we go wrong? Yeah, if the kid commits a crime and if this guy went to the dark side. So, so yeah, like, I, I didn't know. I mean, I, I I couldn't tell if if Han and Leia they, they didn't say if they actually had gotten married at some point. I think I think maybe they just had a kid or they they didn't, they didn't really. Dude, this is this is Star really Wars. Explain. Yeah, it, it, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> It's all about the like the resistance and well, shit. I mean, even Empire. Anakin and Padme got married. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, married, I, I marriage think. exists, but um, but it's just you know, obviously they were together at one point. They had split up, but then they got back together in, in this movie. So that was nice to at least see them come together and have that reunion for a brief moment. And, but again, that that's one of the things that makes me angry about them killing off Han is that we don't get to see that reunion. The of, trio. Uh, of like, of Han and Luke and Leia, I I I wanted to see that so bad after all this time, just to see them, just 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 for one scene, it would have been cool. Like, can you imagine how, like, I mean, I would have been so happy to hear Harrison Ford call a sixty-plus-year-old Mark Hamill, "Hey, kid," <laughs> you know, that would have been so great. Yeah, but it seems, yeah, it seems like this is all of this is just setting the tone for the new films because. Remember that when they when they ask him about Luke or when the, they mention Luke Skywalker, he he uh, Han Solo gets like very like uncomfortable, very serious. Yeah, and he's just I guess he's just like flashing back. I almost saw a tear in his eyes. Like something like something really bad happened. Yeah, or he, like between he, them, he or misses his buddy. He misses, he misses his, him, his or, or he blames him. It's it's very it's very dramatic. There's lots of conflict here. Right. And again, as as we as we mentioned in part one, no Lando. What's up with that? Yeah, like where's I, Lando? I wish I wish we should we we got like a at least like one mention like oh General Calrissian died in the battle of you know something something. Well, they, they better not have killed Lando. Yeah, I swear to God, if they kill Luke in the next couple movies, like I'm 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 gonna be furious. I'm I'm gonna like declare full on jihad or something like a fatwa. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like all this thing about you know having a like a black stormtrooper, but what about you know the the only like kind of like black character in yeah, the he, original trilogy? He, he he was the first brother bring in him Star back, Wars. Bring him back, right? Then there, well then there was Mace. There was Sam Jackson. So. Yeah. Well now with uh, Poe Dameron, Oscar Isaac, he's Latino. So there you go. Did 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 we talk about um the Chinese poster? Was it? I think it was the Chinese poster. They. Uh, no, they, what, they what removed, was on the Chinese poster? So they removed um, Poe Dameron. They removed Chewbacca. They made Finn smaller. They made BB-8 bigger. It seems there's this whole, you know, marketing and slash racial thing going on with the, you think with so? the Chinese audience. But yeah, well, it, that was bizarre. It's like, really? Wow. Okay. I mean, I get. I mean, they're probably not the most ethnically diverse country in the world, obviously. But it's but just removing like like supporting characters from the poster. Okay, yeah, it's like all right. Well, I mean, they're they're there whether on maybe the poster it, maybe or not. it was just too crowded. Who knows? Yeah. Um. Let, let, let's let's talk about. I mean, we we're talking. We're spending a lot of time talking about the old characters. Let's talk about the new characters for a second. Ray. Um. Yes, Ray. She's like. She's like the, the main like badass, strong, in independent one. woman. She's uh, some people. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I guess the big criticism toward her was that she's almost like too powerful, almost like too good. But I mean, I don't, I, I didn't think that at all. Like Max Landis, like he, he had said something about that, saying she was a Mary Sue or whatever, or something to that effect. But I mean, I, 
I thought I thought she was good. I thought she was great. Uh, really, really cool character. Daisy Ridley, I thought, did a great this job is with her. It. This is her first like feature film. She has a, like very little experience. In yeah, it. Do you know what what she's done before? I had never heard of her. No, it seems like this is like one of the first things she's done. So this is she just won the lottery. But um, I believe I read or heard that um, at first JJ called her acting a little bit wooden wooden is that like an expression but yeah it seems like she was a little stiff at first and that's cool because jj was like really calling the shots here like there a lot of people are uh expecting this movie to be amazing and he has to call out the actors if they're not you know giving their best performance but i guess jj did a good job at really like uh, crafting this performance yeah, i mean not for this nothing. is the ray that we know I, I mean not for nothing she was cast for a reason they could have had anyone in there in there but uh but they cast uh daisy ridley in there um, her character was interesting. Like she was, uh, she was definitely a badass for sure. She was like beating up dudes, and you know she knew how to fly. You know, fly all the, all the ships. And uh, I mean, she was a little clumsy at first getting the Falcon off the ground, which uh, I thought that was just a cool reveal. I remember people were cheering as soon as they uh, they saw the Falcon. Yeah, when there. they when they said, "Oh, that, that, oh, what's that? It's a piece of garbage." It's like, oh, they're gonna they're it's gonna like, it's pan, coming. It's they're coming. Pan right, and the, there's like, the Falcon. Yes! Of course, yeah, it's back. Which I thought uh, I thought was a cool little twist. Yeah, but this is a uh, this Ray. It looks like Ray has been through a lot, you know, just like living living by herself, like scavenging, living inside an ATAT. Mm-hmm. Just, she she's had a harsh life. Just you know, counting the days until her family comes back. Um, I guess another yeah, another great characterization, uh, great writing right there. Definitely, and my first uh, react. I mean, obviously, I wasn't totally shocked that she would be force sensitive. Or that she was going to be a force user. For some reason, I thought Finn was going to be a. I thought he was going to be a Jedi as well, or like like, uh, which it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Because I mean, because they showed him so many of the promotional materials of. of they, they showed so many images of him holding the lightsaber. Yeah, it's kind of a and, twist, right? At the end, Ray well, holds the lightsaber. Right. And so I thought like Finn might have been a Jedi. I mean, they could still go that route in the other movies if they want to, but I. Don't think they're going to. There's no indication that Finn has any type of force sensitivity. Either. I mean, like, they always could go that way, but, I mean, it's... You know, someone would have picked up on it. Yeah, but, he's, but, a, I mean, he's a good soldier. He's trained by the First Order, but... Right. So it doesn't seem like that's going to be... That's yeah, going to be their being a Jedi deal. is not a, his forte. Which, um... Yeah, which I, but I mean, he was definitely, he could definitely fight. I mean, he was, he was able to hang with Kylo Ren, you know, in a lightsaber fight for a while. Yeah. Now, granted, Kylo was, sh- you know, he was shot in the chest and he was, you know, and all that, but like he still did pretty good and like even stabbed him in the shoulder before getting taken out. Yeah, but, but by that time, I'm still asking myself, like, how is this even happening? Like, Kylo was like one of those first scenes. You see how powerful this guy is. Yeah. And Finn taking him on with, you know, lightsabers, like, I, it was kind of hard to believe that, you know, maybe Finn was, you know, maybe very to, focused to, at the moment. To be fair, he did just take a blaster to the chest. So it's ah, like he, he was, was he was bleeding pretty bad. He so. was kind of weak. Okay. Yeah. I, I, can, I can take that. <laughs> yeah. Plus, he probably hadn't been challenged in a while. So maybe, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Like, Kylo should have, you know... Like, he shouldn't have been able to get a shot he off. He could have but... just, like, force choked him or, like, paralyzed right. him. It seems he did that with a couple of people in the movie, so... Why not? I, I mean, who knows? I mean, he just killed his dad, just got shot in the chest by uh, by Chewie. So, who, you know. It's it's only a movie. Right. So, <laughs> it's like you could take the leap. It's like, all right. And then, you know, Ren, with like hardly any force training, was able to, to fight him pretty well. Yeah, it's like it's. And like messed it him up just... pretty bad, which I'm guessing it's going to lead to him becoming more machine than man. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about maybe obviously cybernetics in there, furthering the parallels between him and uh, Grandpa Anakin. Was his hand cut off? I kind of saw like maybe like a limb was cut off. I I I don't think so. I I think he kept his limbs. I'd have to go back and check that out. Um, It is PG-13, so there's not a lot of close-ups here. (laughs) Right. There. I mean, there was definitely some blood in there. Yeah. More so than the the other ones. I think Revenge of the Sith is is the only other PG-13 Star Wars movie that's been out so far. Um, but I guess yeah, uh, that scene with Ray. I guess that is uh, the Force Awakens because right. she got strong really fast. And, and the big hint is, and I had thought this upon seeing um, seeing it right away, and it seemed like they were hinting that. I think the big like 
the suggestion was that she is Luke's daughter. Yeah. Now, upon further review, I've gone on like the official Star Wars Wikipedia, which I don't know if you, it's called Wookie, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. I now I'm having second thoughts. She might not necessarily be Luke's kid. Yeah, I guess it's another like fifty-fifty scenario. Like we don't know. It could be. It could not be. Like, how are they gonna do this? Like, how are they gonna write this up? Yeah. We just gotta wait. We have no idea. Right. So I mean. Which again, that that would be another thing. Be like, Luke, why would you leave your kid behind? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. The, uh, now about Ray and her parentage, there were a couple little Easter eggs that I found online, and apparently, um, there was some voiceover work done in that flashback scene. Oh, yeah, I just when, I just literally read that before yeah, coming here. When she touched Anakin's lightsaber, she had like a big flashback of like. Because it, it looked like she had two parents yeah, back there who might have gotten killed. And maybe they abandoned her or whatever the, the case was. That first flashback, I believe, was actually Bespin, right? It was Cloud, like Cloud City, that hallway where Luke fights Vader. I couldn't tell, but it was the one of like Luke, I, I guess, grabbing his old lightsaber. That was formerly his dad's. Yeah. And I guess he was there with R2 or whatever the, whatever the case was. Um, yeah, so, so they... According to a few sites that I had read, and I, I think this is true, according to their Twitter handle and everything, that J.J. had brought in uh, Ewan McGregor mm-hmm. to do a voiceover part that was spliced in like over top of a line that Sir Alec Guinness had read, too. Yeah. Kind of combining both. Supposedly, it was like the, the, the voice of Obi-Wan. He says, afraid, and they edited out the Ray. Right. <laughs> And movie magic, and supposedly Frank Oz had come in and recorded a bit as Yoda. Dude, I did not catch any of that when with yeah, my first I, I, I had no idea. Like, I was too focused. No, on I the mean visuals. there was so much going on. How yeah. could you? It, it would be, so, it's like in Episode Two where they had Liam Neeson do Anakin, Anakin. You know, it's yeah. like you, you kind of thought maybe at first, but you weren't sure. So, um, but yeah, so that that leads me to an interesting theory I have. And maybe this might not play play out. Maybe this is reaching a bit. What if Ray is a descendant of Obi Wan Kenobi, of Obi Wan Kenobi? Now think about it. After the fall of the Jedi, yeah, you know we're led to believe that he spends twenty years in Tatooine, you know, waiting yeah. for Luke to grow up. Uh huh. Now, in that time, the Jedi Order is no more. You yeah, think he, it's possible that he might have like gone somewhere, maybe had a relationship, maybe had a kid. Ooh, yeah, maybe, maybe she might maybe Ray might be like his long lost like granddaughter that he does they never knew, knew. I mean, grant I'm I'm reaching here. I know I know it's a stretch, but you never know. I mean, like, you know, a lot could have happened in 20 years. Yeah, you think he just spent 20 years in in his little uh a uh, house over on Tatooine, just, just waiting for, for Luke to come of age and right. be ready to be a Jedi. I guess that that's pretty interesting. Maybe you know we might get a couple of you know Obi One prequels. Who knows? Like the in, well, what they, happens they, between they, these twenty years? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean the the talk about that is that they definitely want you and McGregor to come back and reprise the role to yeah. have a few Obi One solo adventures, which would be rad. I would love to see that. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so that I mean, again, that that's probably I'm I'm probably looking deeper in it than, than there is. Yeah, I don't know if that's far. Gonna, yeah. So that would be kind of cool to have that connection, but it might also be cool to have Ray be just kind of her own person, yeah, and not I've, necessarily blood related to Luke. I've or heard Obi-Wan. that she might have might be another like virgins in the Force, you know, just um, you know another Phantom Menace. Uh, she was conceived by the Force. Yeah, as I've heard that. But that or... also leaves the question: If Luke is her dad, then who's her mom? <laughs> Mara Jade. Yeah, and she's dead. Right. Which we don't know if Mara Jade is a thing in this in this new. Yeah, Mara Jade. For those of you listening, that that was Luke's wife in the books that like yeah, you know, and all the expanded universe stuff that came out there. Um, so I don't know. You know who knows? But there's a lot going on with her. Uh, Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac, was was a pretty cool character. Yeah, it was, it's was pretty uh, pretty natural. It's like all of this seemed so familiar. It's like it's been thirty years, but we sat down and it was like 
like no time has passed really like at least on the like the tone of the film and all right. these characters they're, they're just so natural to this universe and uh oscar isaac did a great job it's just like he's so believable right there right and, and he didn't they didn't try to make him another han solo no. like you know he's kind of his own guy he has a little bit of that cool factor in there but like he's still very much his own dude yeah um so i like that it seemed like um and, and i was surprised at like how much humor was in this movie yeah they tried they try to keep uh, they threw in a lot of jokes yeah. which i i guess i mean it's probably unavoidable and that's partially that's jj abrams he's got sort of a quirky sense of humor yeah you could totally get, get this like uh, kind of the, the star trek reboot um vibe for all these uh like comedic hits that are going on through it yeah. but also he was they they were talking about trying to bring the the humor from the first trilogy, you know, uh, especially from A New Hope. You know, all those Han Solo like bits and uh, right, jokes. yeah. They're trying to bring they, that they, back. They got very jokey, which uh, which I didn't mind. Uh, my buddy Corey, shout out C Dub, I know you're listening. Um, you know, my buddy Corey was like texting me. He's like, man, that kind of took me out of it. He's like, I thought they got too jokey, and I was kind of rolling my eyes by the end of it, and. Um, you know, I mean, that didn't really bother me. Like, I, I kind of got... It didn't really ruin it for maybe, me. Maybe, like, 25% of those uh, jokes were like, okay, uh, you know, you don't, like, you don't all have right. to go too far. But it's like, all there right, were you're... a couple of ones with, like, Han when he's like, that's not how the Force works. That was that, that was good. This I, is... That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I popped admit. for that one. That was good. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, but, I mean, yeah. Harrison Ford as an old Han Solo just... I mean, the guy's a charm factory. Yeah, he great, was great. Great tribute before the death. Yeah. Again, I'm just I'm so sad that he's not going to be in anymore because I he, I thought he was just so great. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we we have to talk about Maz Kanata and we have to talk about Snoke. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with Maz Kanata first. Um, I like if you hadn't if I didn't know that that was Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah. Like I would have never guessed that was her. Like she like her vo- voice performance, like. And she's like a really, I mean, she's a beautiful young actress, but like her voice, it made her sound like much older and weathered as, and which is what this character was supposed to be. And I think there was, you know, definitely some CGI involved, you know, with, uh, with Maz Kanata, obviously, but, yeah. um, but, uh, it was a cool character. I could see that like character being in a bunch of these like spinoff films Yeah. and, Saying that she's like a thousand years old, so she's been around for everything. Yeah, she she says you know she's been through like the rise and fall of the empire and maybe the old republic and all that good stuff. So that'd be pretty rad to see her like be like the connector to all the old trilogies. She's and the stuff. same age as Yoda, basically. So yeah, yeah, because she is the new Yoda. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, she's not she's not a force user, but um, but she she says she feels the force like she she uh. I don't know. She understands it. Yes. Yeah. Which, by the way, Kylo Ren. I guess this is like one of the things for the casual fans to understand. It's he is not Sith. Like it's a different order of dark Jedi, for lack of a better term. Like the Knights of Ren. It seems like they're going to be their own thing, but it's very heavily Sith influenced. Yeah. So I mean, it's a slight difference. It's like it's like we play both kinds. We play country and western. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's I mean you know. Grasping at straws here, but it's like it, it's just a different order, different. Yeah, deal, I'm not sure. Like but. even like at the end of Return of the Jedi, I guess the whole you know order, like the rule of two, mm-hmm. is like completely destroyed because right. the Emperor and Vader right. die, and that's like no more. So, is there a third? No, there can't be. No, no, probably not. Unless so. you know, or unless now that we you know maybe we can talk a little bit about I mean this. hell man Any, anything's possible at this point we you can know? talk about uh, Snoke and uh, yeah the theories that he have you heard that this uh, he might be Darth Plagueis the Wise yeah you know, somebody mentioned that uh, somebody had mentioned that to me the other day that would actually that would connect the prequel trilogy very very that, heavily with like the new one like, that would be incredible that would because... like make everything kind of like make sense now yeah, that would open up a lot of different things because, you know, Darth Plagueis was mentioned in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, that was a great scene, by the way. Yeah. That's one of my favorite scenes. It was, like, very hint- It was hinted at that he was Palpatine's master, that Palpatine supposedly killed him in his sleep, but that he was... He hinted that he was able to create life. Yeah, now, he could influence the midi-chlorians to, to create, create life. life. Now... 
he may have just been full of crap and trying and trying to like talk Anakin into you know crossing over, which yeah. he did. Which clearly he was trying to you know implicate. He's like, eh, yeah, I know how to save lives, which he clearly didn't. He, he said, "It's like, oh well, uh, I don't. But if we do it together, then we could do that." Yeah. But he already, but then again, if he, he said, already hooked him in at that. If point. he said he could cheat death, that and Palpatine said he killed him. It's like, bro, you just said he could cheat death. Like, so he's he totally might be alive, around. bro. Yeah, you're he's right. Totally maybe. alive, and he's probably Snoke. And boom. Here's an even deeper theory on Darth Plagueis. Do you think it's possible that he may have caused like? Use the use the midi chlorians or whatever to like to conceive Anakin. Yeah, that's uh, because Anakin. Uh, you know, they Shmi said he had no father, which is like, kind of like a almost like a Jesus allegory there. Yeah, like immaculate conception. Yeah, or she just really stuck to her story. <laughs> Come on, um, Shmi. <laughs> yeah, it seems like there's there's something in the book, um, Darth Plagueis book, of just him like concentrating and focusing his you know dark force energy like just out into space. Damn. And he's just getting chicks pregnant. Yeah, he basically he's just like swing, like, swing, swing, swing. And it's he, like he, he's like Tracy Morgan. He's like, I'm gonna take my shirt off. I'm gonna get her pregnant. You're probably gonna cut this out, aren't you? Oh no, I'm keeping this in. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> it seems like it's either that, but there's also you know this uh, thing about Palpatine, you know, being like learning this technique, and Palpatine is actually the one behind you know uh, conceiving you know Anakin with just uh, affecting the midichlorians. Right, um, but I, that that was that was never like addressed in the movies. But again, this, this theory that uh, these are all theories. I mean, and that's the great thing about this series that you can have stuff like that. Is and Palpatine, like Anakin's father, that'd be that'd be weird. That'd be super weird. But that that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be a crazy twist. Well, unless they officially say nope, that's not how it happened. Then we can talk about it. I mean, a- anything's possible at this point. Like you know. But yeah, Snoke. I, I, the first time I saw Snoke, I was like, is this guy actually like 30 feet high? Is this for real? I was like, whoa, this guy's gigantic. A lot of people said he looked like one of those trolls from, from the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> yeah. Which makes sense. Andy Serkis is playing him. So yeah, totally. There's a there's a connection there. But, um, you know, it seemed like he was a hologram and they just made him look bigger in the hologram yeah, instead like, of his actual size. As, as soon as the hologram turned off, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. It's kind of, well, kind of like an empire, how, like, Palpatine was just a big floating head. Yeah. But this is like a full body, like, in a big chair. It's like, yeah. I, I thought this was, like just a giant guy who was you know to the dark side yeah and i mean andy circus doing the voice was just like yeah that was ominous so again we didn't really spend a lot of time with snoke in this one obviously he's the one pulling the strings so i imagine that as these movies go go on we're going to find out more about what he's all about and where he came from and what he is some of the rumors were that he might be palpatine himself reincarnated or cloned or something that would be pretty wild, but you know who knows. I'm into the I'm into the Darth Plagueis thing. That that would be pretty rad if it was Darth Plagueis, though. Um, yeah. Who else? Who else? So would, what's uh, up with Captain Phasma? It's like all these toys and all this marketing. Captain Phasma didn't do anything. She, she's kind of like the Boba Fett of this new trilogy. Like, she just speaks and looks cool, you know. Right. That's hopefully the, we'll see her kick some ass in the second one. You know? I, I mean, I I imagine that that you know. I would think that they're going to follow up a little bit more with her because, um, you know, who knows? We'll see. Um, but right now it's kind of, I, I, I feel kind of like cheated because it's like, it feels like Captain Phasma was just kind of like a cash grab. Like, look at this really cool story. And, uh, and and that guy General Hux. Yeah. He he's, didn't really know what his, I, I mean. He's pretty I, evil. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of assumed that he was sort of like the Tarkin he's to Kylo very, Ren's Yeah, very Vader. trigger happy as he's like blowing up like three planets at once. Right? Like that. Let's talk about the Starkiller base for a second. Because yeah, a lot of people got criticism, thought it was about this movie. And of course, there's a criticism coming already. Not everyone's going to like it, as we predicted in part one. Um, but like the Starkiller base, that was like, a lot of people thought it was too much. It's like, okay, really? They're doing another Death Star? But this was like Death Star kicked up a notch. Yeah. Um, like five like, times Like as they big. hollowed out an entire planet. Yeah. Which... Uh, which is pretty wacky to me because it's like, wait a minute, they were on the surface of the planet. How does that still generate oxygen? Yeah. 
and still have plant life. But and it seems they don't even have to be in like the same star system anymore. They can be like on the other side of the galaxy and just blow stuff up. Yeah, like ha- like how does that work? Like they can't like the Death Star. You could at least take other places. This like you're still staying in one place. Yeah. So which is like kind of a disadvantage, but at the same time, it's like I couldn't tell if they were drawing power from their own sun or like other stars. Which I'm like, wait a minute. If they're sucking out energy from their own sun, they would all be dead. Yeah. How, how would that work? But but apparently they're sucking out like star systems from other. I mean, stars from other star systems and killing like entire like planets left and right. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's we need, uh, that's need, pretty. Neil deGrasse Tyson, please help us. Right, Doctor Tyson, if you're listening, help us out with this because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, at a certain point, it's all bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, it's only a movie. Yes. But um, but yeah, no, I thought I thought Star Killer Base was pretty awesome. I guess I, it doesn't even matter anymore because it's uh, it's gone. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> but yeah, like they, they again, they found a, a weakness for that pretty quickly, don't you think? Yeah, it seems to happen in these movies. So, so something I found, something I I, I kind of realized the other day when they said that Finn's job as a stormtrooper was sanitation. <laughs> that was a little bit of a nod to Kevin Smith, was it not? Pretty much, yeah. Because <laughs> remember, in Clerks, where he's like. So come on, you think the average stormtrooper knows how to install plumbing? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, that whole, uh, that, like, that whole dialogue between Randall, like, oh, there were so many innocent people on Death Star when it got blown up, like all these right. contractors and all. <laughs> Which I remember George Lucas kind of like came back in an interview with that. He's like, um, you know what? They're Genosians that, that that built the Death Star. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, screw those guys. They can <laughs> yeah, all die. They suck. Oh man, but um. That that ending shot though, that three sixty helicopter shot of Luke standing on the cliff, looking uh, like a wise Jedi master. I cried like a little oh, girl. I, I mean, I wish we could have heard him speak. Oh the man, so, uh, sometimes silence speaks louder than words. It's just what we needed. Yeah, and um, and he looks so cool, man. He looks that's so awesome. I have to say, Mark Hamill has aged a little bit better than Sir Alec Guinness. Actually, like, I, I don't know, like, you see Hamill, like, like on, like, the red carpets and stuff, he looks, like, kind of messed up. But yeah, here, I mean, he I, just like, looks a, a, year, so... a year or two ago, he wasn't uh, in very good shape, but no, he, but, he no, cuts Luke some Skywalker, and... he looks so badass with his long hair and his beard, and just that look, he just... Looked he, like King Arthur, man. He, did, he, he just, just had looks, Regal distinguished about he him. He looks so defeated and so, like, messed up psychologically. That That final look, it's like... Oh, I can't You're do this You're just wondering, like, what happened to this dude? Yeah, but, man, I, I literally, like, my girlfriend turned to me, and she was like, Antonio, you're, are you okay? Because I was, you know, I just stopped breathing. I, I was I was tearing up. I was crying my eyes out. Like, I was angry that they ended it there. I'm like, no, keep going. I want to learn more. I think that I was, uh, but that was half, great. half through the trailer, uh, no, half through the credits, and I was still, like, uh. It took some time. You needed to process it. I yeah. mean, just all that stuff. Um, that yeah, I, I, like, I liked BB-8. I thought BB-8 was super cute, as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's a, um, cool, it's, a, it's a nice toy. Yeah, a, a thing I was wondering about R2, because R2 was supposedly shut down ever since Luke, like, disappeared. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like he, he got depressed. And like, he just, was, like... <laughs> was he sad because because Luke left? But at the same time... Uh, and again, it's it's a robot, but I'm thinking like R2 wouldn't do that. He, you know, he's the he's the bravest droid that there there's ever been. He would stay and help Leia and the Resistance and everything. Yeah. But maybe Luke programmed him to do that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. R2, R2 by the way, is my my wife's favorite character in in all the movies. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe uh, R2 has. Maybe he's like Wally. He has he has a soul. <laughs> R2 and has some self esteem issues. Yeah, and just like all this stuff happened to Luke. Luke left him, and he's like, oh man. I lost my best friend. I'm yeah. so sad. Right. He's like, this happened with his dad. <laughs> like, you know, well, not exactly happened, with, but you know. But yeah. Uh, 3PO had a red arm for some reason. Not not sure why. No, 3PO was kind of awkward. Yeah, well, I mean, 3PO is always kind of awkward. It's like, what was his let's pur- n- purpose? In let's not film? forget, kids. Long before there was Jar Jar Binks, there was 3PO. <laughs> oh, he was so, like, awkward. Yeah. 
Just like the, that first scene where they introduce him, like, hey, C-3PO, okay, yeah, he's being awkward. It's like, oh, yeah, that's that's right. We don't really like him that much. <laughs> it's just like, why, why are you always interrupt everything? It's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, you don't really need him, but it wouldn't be the same without him. Yeah, he's just... He's, <laughs> he's just, just there. He's <laughs> just there. He's been in everything else. Just yeah. put him back. So, oh, man, well, we've uh, talked about this movie for quite a bit. Uh, what do you I th- mean... What do you think about the music, bro? Uh, it sounded great. I uh, again, I would have to go a few more times. There weren't like a, I, I can't think of like a lot of the new music cues that stood out to me. Like I, I don't, I don't remember a lot of what the new themes were. I knew, th- I know that there was some new music. I would have to listen to it a little bit more for it to really get stuck in my head. Um, yeah, I was look- really looking forward to this movie. Not only you know because of the story. Just um, I'm a real big fan of John Williams. Yeah, and, yeah, he's back for this and one. I was super excited for to listen to his music, and uh, I was I was actually surprised that I wasn't uh, that impressed by the new score that much. It's not overall. It's not the best that he's done so far. Right. Like obviously you compare it to stuff like, you know, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and Or like in the every... prequels what he did Duel of the Fates. That yeah, was killer. Actually the prequels has really good music. Yeah. Um but yeah, like almost every track in like Empire is really a standalone. It's just like very uh it's just a very good musical score overall. Here yeah. it seems like there's you know john williams is still amazing of course right but all it seems like there's a lot of filler (laughs) yeah just a lot of like action based you know um, i can't remember anything anything that stood out to me in particular Um, there there are a couple of tracks for me like i i know i recognize like ray's theme i was like whoa this is the new like the main character's theme this is amazing. Like I totally dig that. That stood out to me, and obviously the track that most stood out to me was the Resistance theme. And I, the the first time I heard this, I was like, "John Williams, you did it." He actually wrote like the opposite of mm-hmm. the Imperial March. He wrote, and, and when I heard the soundtrack, finally, it's actually the March of the Resistance. So this is like a happy, more positive Imperial March, and I thought it right. was fantastic. And anyways, those those two tracks and right, I, I I would have to hear them again. I would probably know them if I heard them again. I can't remember right now how they go. Yeah. I'm sure as I see this movie more and more, you know, we'll be able to do that. But um, but I mean, you have to talk about the music because it is a like a, yeah, a character I mean, in the film. That's I mean, that's as much as part of the Star Wars lore as anything. Uh, if if John Williams hadn't scored this movie, it probably hadn't been as popular as it was. Right. I mean, hands down. No matter what, in the in the anthology movies, the the spinoff stuff, they're always going to use his themes, no matter who's doing the score. It's it's evergreen. It's going to be point. interesting how all these the different composers that come up are going to like do their own take on like John Williams. Right. But they're still going to keep his like main themes in there, of course. But yeah, they're going to do other know. stuff around, like like what the Clone Wars did, like the 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 TV show. I mean. But um, but yeah, I mean overall, I'm satisfied with the movie, man. Like it's uh, you know again, it left a lot more questions than it answered. But I guess that was the point from the start. Yeah. And uh, and I'm excited. It's really yeah. It's really hard that a movie actually uh, kept up to expectations and all the hype. And I think it did. It yeah. it did. It it. I wish I hadn't seen as much as I did, like with all the teasers and trailers. Uh, but still, like like I thought, it was just like five percent of the film. There was a lot of it that was a big surprise for me, and I'm glad for that. But this is definitely a good film, and everyone's talking about it. Yeah, I I mean, you know, again, you know, there, there are little minor things we can complain about, like you know, maybe some of the jokes for some people, or maybe uh, maybe people didn't think it was original enough, or. You know, I, I mean, I, obviously, I'm angry at Han Solo dying, but I understand why it happened. Yeah. I really, JJ, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, you know, Ryan, Rian Johnson, whoever's directing the next. <laughs> if you guys are listening, try and try and keep keep Luke alive for a little bit. I I, I don't want him to die, please. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but I mean, look, whatever happens, happens. I I'm all in. Um. I but, definitely have to see it again to like see just if, take it in like just and see just, new stuff yeah just uh t- but also you know just uh take a look at all the structure and all like the other like film elements to it as you know as like a film yeah like, and being a, a film guy obviously you, you see that in a whole different we way we can't just you know judge it on the first view because 
if the first time you saw Phantom Menace, you were like, oh, that was, that was pretty awesome. And then yeah. you're like, eh, actually, you know what? And looking back, uh, structurally and, uh, you know, with all the performances, I'm not very convinced. Right. But, you know, uh, I guess I'll give it a couple of views and, and see if it's actually as good as that first view and if it has uh, holds up to the awesomeness. <laughs> We'll see, man. I, uh, you know, I know that there's a pretty quick turnaround from from now until episode eight, which is m- May of 2017. So that's that's only like a year and a half away. Yeah. Like instead of waiting three years in between these, we got a year and a half. And we got, plus we got Rogue Squadron out next year. Yeah, Rogue One, the the prequel, uh, stealing the Death Star plans. Yeah, it's gonna be the first of the spinoff movies. So it's like. You know, not for nothing. That's that, that's not too bad. I mean, I I, I mean, obviously, I, I really I can't wait for episode eight, but you know, it, it's not so bad. A year and a half, like we'll be okay. That's that's a good turnaround. I'm satisfied with that. Um, but you think with all these movies coming out, like we're gonna literally have maybe one or two Star Wars movies coming out every year, like from now on. Do you think you'll ever get tired of them? I mean, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people will. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure not everyone is going to be, not every one of them is going to be a world shattering box office record. I think it's going to be like James Bond, where it's like, you know, you have some that some people might like, you have some that some that people don't like. You know, you have Sean Connery, then you have Roger Moore, then you have Timothy Dalton, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing to take away from this movie, like we mentioned in part one. Um, for those, for everyone criticizing it, for everyone saying, "Oh, it sucks," this, like, you know what? As good as this movie is, you can't expect it to be the greatest movie ever because none of the Star Wars movies, none of them were flawless. You know, they all have little things. If you look hard enough, you can poke holes in anything. Yeah. But you know, it's like it doesn't have to be the best movie ever. It just has to take you there for a little bit. And for me, at more than accomplished that, I was incredibly satisfied with it it left me wanting more yeah i'm just happy to be back you know it did see far far away exactly man it did everything that it was supposed to do and just just opened up this universe even more than it was before it's new star wars i know i'm so excited about it i can't wait for this you know they have spinoff movies coming out it's just it's really giving it a whole new lease on life and just there's so many different things to explore so many different characters and different time periods so and stuff like that. So many toys to buy. Right? It's like, oh my god. Like, Shut up and take my money. Y- all of it. <laughs> How many BB-8s can you buy? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know. I wish I had a real life BB-8 and a real life R2. Some robot buddies to hang out with. That'd be great. Yes. Just follow you around. Right? Go to the grocery shopping. All yeah, that good yeah. stuff. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want a robot buddy like that? Come on. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Well, that's cool, man. Antonio Comunius is here with me. Uh, why don't you uh, plug where they can, uh, if you have anything to plug here uh, right now, now's the time to do it. Where can they find you on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff? Well, okay, so uh, I guess my, my Facebook is Antonio Comunias. Uh, it's got that uh, Spanish like squiggle the, the, the over tilde. the... <laughs> yeah, the tilde over the, the N. Um, yeah, I have like a filmmaker profile there. Um I have a I have some stuff on YouTube as well, but right now I'm just um, um, shooting like on my days off this uh, drama with some Japanimation elements. Something I'm very passionate about. You know, if you're into like Dragon Ball Z, um, uh, Sailor Moon, all these you know tsunami based uh, um, animations back in the day. Um, this is basically like a live action low key indie film that i'm working on it's basically something that combines everything that i love into a project that i'm really excited to be um spending my time with and hopefully uh by the end of 2016 it's already been in a couple of festivals um anyways um i hope to start nice man speak speaking of festivals We've had uh, a movie that you and I worked together on, uh, ah. which we, which we filmed a year ago. It's called Split Decision. Yeah, uh, I was one of the actors in it. Antonio was the director and writer. Uh, that that's been shopped out to a couple of film festivals, hasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, been playing at, at least at three or four festivals. Uh, there are two of them that are still awaiting like a, like an actual like re- release date or like a premiere date. Yeah. Um, 
because they you know just, just locations and stuff like that uh, that they're working on um but yeah th- those are films that are still being sent out and hopefully you know do you think you might like to... give it give it a release like online or something like that or where people can see it or I, uh... yeah i think like after after this year has already passed i think it's time to just release it into the wild and just have right. people randomly click on it and check it out so anyway it's called split decision definitely um, and the first thing you and i did together was that dark knight returns fan film yeah that's just a little something... excerpt of that i i played uh i played jimmy olsen in there i, I narrated it yeah. and uh that was that was the first thing we had done together that was that was a pretty cool thing definitely that's yeah. that's up on youtube i can provide a link for that in the description as well yeah hopefully i, I actually want to uh, go back to that and Maybe even get a you know a little bit of more budget and make it super legit with you know more uh, makeup and more uh, comic book characters that can kind of like appear as Easter eggs and that nice and that imper- imperial bar, um, but yeah definitely something that I'm really passionate about in Dark Knight Returns, um, but yeah hopefully all this stuff can be crowdfunded and you can get support by anyone who wants to watch these things and, and get it made get it produced so definitely man well, let, eye well, out for that. well let me know when you do the dark knight returns thing i i i want back in for that man that, that would be awesome yeah dude you are <laughs> you are jimmy olsen right i uh, appreciate it dude uh well that's awesome um and as far as me i'm jack connor make sure you check uh make sure you check me out on facebook on facebook.com slash jack connor music uh follow me on twitter at jack x connor c-o-n-n-o-r uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything, any, anything you want to ask me or ask Antonio, just email me at uh, jackconnorpodcast at gmail.com. Also check out my band, Vertebraker, at www.vertebraker.net. And um, that's it, man. So uh, it's definitely May the Force be with you all. This has been the Phoenix Report with Jack Connor with Antonio Comunas. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you Peace. Guys. Peace.